All right, man, Torture Talk, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock show, 6 o'clock show. What's up, what's up, what's up? Everybody come in, man, come in. Thank y'all very much for being here with me. Thank y'all, thank y'all, appreciate y'all. All right, man, so today's show, we're going to be talking about Joe Button saying that the music industry is broke. Everybody's broke, and I'm going to give my take on it and why I think that is, and the industry is over. And, um, yeah, man. We in for a rough patch, man. Rough patch. You know what I'm saying? And this has nothing to really do with rap, but let's go. So, you know I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you're new here, please like, share, subscribe to the page. Let me work for your subscription today if you're not subscribed. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Cash app. Q card is in the description. Hey, man, they called me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to almost 11,000. I'm almost there. Got about 100 more to go. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, that's a great feeling, going from 1,300. And uh, let me know where you're from. Truly appreciate it. I'd like to know where people are from because um, it gives me insight of, you know, how far I'll reach. So, look, man, we're going to get into this video. We'll be back to discuss. You know what it is, man. All right, man, you already know. <laughs> Link's going to be in the description. All that good stuff. Also, too, make sure y'all go check out the 8 a.m. show, 12 o'clock show, 8 a.m. show, 12 o'clock show. This is the 6 p.m. show. So, look, we're going to get into it, man. Let's go. I think it's much worse than we letting on. Labels is merging. Whole entire departments mm. is getting fired. All of the musicians are broke. This music Radio. shit is a rap. DIYers, it gets even uglier. DIY. DIYers, over the last week, Joe Button made some very interesting statements about the current condition of the music industry. Now, before he led up to this new statement, there was another controversial statement that he made where he said basically the female wave of rappers that we experienced with the Sexy Reds, the Ice Spice, he was basically saying that whatever that campaign was, it's done for. Not for them. Mm. Mm, that's a pretty good statement, man. I ain't gonna lie. I think that, uh, yeah, man. Now, I'm gonna explain why. I'm gonna get into why I believe that everything has gone to shit. And I'm gonna get into that. But let's go. But for anyone new in the rap field that wants to get in, to this business. However, in response to all of the controversy and all the angry commentary that was pushed his way because of those comments, he responds, it's even worse than that, DIYers. <laughs> he says it's even worse than just the female rappers. He said, oh, you thought I was just talking about them. Joe, what do you, what do you mean? Conversation took off when I said that about the women, but I think much worse. Like, I try to come in here and filter my thought. I think much worse about the music business. Mm -hmm. I think all of them are over. I think all of your favorite artists are finito and finished. I don't think none of these people are making any coin from the music business. I think it's much worse than we letting on. We don't even have no way to get this type of information because it's all at the tippy, 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 tippy top, and we don't talk mm -hmm. to each other. And it's tech games. And it's tech games. They they gearing up for whatever is to come, and they're a lot earlier than than I knew. They've been playing. They've been playing for for years. Like seeing the um the big press outlets bigging up certain types and styles of music has been an indicator to me where musicianship performance, like actually being good at being a musician, has been cast aside for years and years and years. But um, yeah, I got a I got a theory. That I'm gonna run past y'all. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Tell me what y'all think. It's a crazy theory that I have, and I think that this is the reason why they don't really care about it. So let's play a little more. I'm not gonna watch this whole video. I'm gonna play enough of it, let him give some commentary, and then y'all gonna go and subscribe and watch his channel. Let's go. 
In this channel, I feel like we've done a really good job of bringing to light this phenomenon of major labels imbalance in promoting toxic type of music, violent type of music. It has always been, at least with hip hop, there's always been an opportunity for two sides of the coin to exist. Right, you'll have your street records, you'll have your conscious records, but it seems like as the years have passed, it has been a primary focus on only one type of brand of music. And it seems like even more so in the last few years, and I feel like this is what Parks is getting to, in the last few years, it feels like there's an extra emphasis on how low can we go? How ridiculous can we go? And if we put the machine behind it, could it possibly be something that, you know what I'm saying, we could make some extra coins for before this whole damn thing flips upside down with the emergence of AI and other things. It's slowly getting worse. It's kind of opening the door for AI everything, essentially. I'm with you. I think there's a focus on streaming. AI, I think there's a focus on just replacing you guys, the Human artists. Beings, right? I just think rap is cast aside. The 50 years of hip hop told me that. How much of the pie there even is to distribute amongst artists tell me that. The way albums don't drop anymore tell Yeah, man. I, I, I've been saying this for a long time. Hip hop is not the main focus anymore. And I got a lot to say at the end of this, but let them keep, I'm gonna let them go on. And then we're going to go with it. So let's go. Tells me that all of you artists getting your money from somewhere else tells me that. Last year, no number one hip hop album for however long tells me that. Six, the months. number ones that came tells me that. Travis, Uzi, Drake. There's only seven. There's seven rappers mm. that they focus on. If you're not getting it touring, or if you're not getting it through other means, mm -hmm. this Brand, music Brand shit deal. is a rap. Let's break it down. Now, he said something kind of in passing that I think that I noticed over the last few years, and I, and I wish there was more conversations around it, but I, I give him the utmost props for bringing this up. It always confused me how many of even the successful names, or at least what I would see as successful, had their hands in different pots. Now, someone in business may say, well, that's smart. That's what you do. You got to reinvest your money. However, there were fields that didn't really make any sense real estate without any history uh knowing about anything when it comes to commercial property or just any of these things it's like what no that's not that's not a stupid venture though i mean even if you don't know about commercial property even if you don't know about real estate just owning a piece of land is extremely big you know what i'm saying i totally disagree with that i think that if you got some, if you if you are investing with someone who knows about real estate, yeah, because I don't think that a person is just jumping into something, don't know how to get into it. Obviously, they're talking to somebody, but if you're getting into commercial real estate, yeah, you a rapper, you should definitely, all you rappers should definitely try to own a piece of land, own some land, own some, create a, a, a community, anything you can, because I believe Joe Buttons owns a lot of properties i believe you own a lot of properties it's a lot of it's a lot of people who own a lot of pro properties and owning commercial real estate is that's not a bad thing what is someone advising you like what is the actual goal and then you start finding that they start pushing these other streams of revenue with more energy and more vigor than their actual music career and these are not artists that have been well established they just found their first bag and with their first bag, now it has all almost shifted entirely what their career really is. Now, on the front, everybody would see them as a rapper, but if you looked at their portfolio, it looked very much different because it is common knowledge that the, the music is not the thing that's generating income, especially when you think about streaming. And I'm glad all these conversations about streaming are becoming more and more frequented because... Another thing, too, that I think a lot of y'all misunderstanding about money managing money and making money i think that y'all get caught up in this thing where rappers have to stay in in a certain lane so like you just said like y your primary uh your primary source of income would be rap but if you ain't making no rap and you made enough money to jump in a different genre then why not 
And I think that a lot of y'all, I think a lot of a lot of fans, like y'all want, and I hate to say it this way, but y'all want rappers to stay broke just to please y'all. And I ain't saying you saying that. I'm just saying like most of most fans, they want rappers to just rap the same way, do the same thing, don't advance in, in their career, just do the same thing. I don't care if you're not making no money, just make me happy. You know what I'm saying? So I get what you're saying, but I kind of semi disagree. As streaming was supposed to be an answer to a temporary issue with piracy, right? When I say temporary, it's not to say that there's still not any piracy issues going on, but it was an immediate, when folks were panicking, streaming was the answer. Now, it has evolved somewhat in terms of the experience for the user, but to me, it seems like it has evolved very little. In um, I don't know if I agree. I kind of agree with that, and I kind of disagree with that. Like, you basically saying that streaming stopped the burning the piracy of CDs, but streaming came much later. Like, I think the piracy thing wasn't really... I think it wasn't because Apple Music, I believe, was I believe Apple Music was the first to start streaming, but they didn't have that many songs, albums on there. And I think a lot of people didn't really burn CDs no more like that anyway. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, they downloaded CDs, but I don't think really people was burning them like that. It was more of uh, lines of uh, sharing CDs, sharing music through uh, diff other means. Now, I mean, you could. This it's kind of semi right. He kind of semi right about that, but I don't think that that actually streaming actually was to kill the piracy thing. I don't, well, I think I don't think it was that was the intention because Apple didn't care about that. Maybe the record labels later on because record labels came later on and jumped into streaming. But ultimately, I don't think that that was maybe later on, but in the beginning, that's not what it was all about because they didn't really care for streaming. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think it was really with streaming. I think iTunes allows you to buy the album. Then Apple Music came a little bit later, but let's keep it going. In terms of the things and the tools that we actually need as artists to thrive as businesses. All of you, all, I, I'm saying all of the musicians are broke. Relatively, relative to what you bring in. Now, I yes. do think that there is um, plenty of ways to make money as independents. Low overhead. Hello. It's not expensive to make these albums, you're making them at home or wherever and you're building a reasonable fan base and you're selling physical and merch. They're, yeah, my conversation now is not really, about, it's a it's not really about independent acts. Yeah, okay. My, my conversation is about what's going on in the majors. They tricking y'all with the words in these contracts. They tricking y'all into thinking that y'all are real partners. They tricking y'all with the, hey, you own your stuff. <laughs> the, the recent layoffs tell me that. You don't see all these people getting laid off? Yeah. Laid off. Yeah, you didn't see all these people getting laid off? Let's talk about him. This was also some major news over the last week. Universal Music Group, UMG, the same ones that just recently removed their music from TikTok, had to lay off over 800 employees. Sony Music, in addition to that, is expecting to lay off employees soon. Experts say many smaller artists signed to these labels could be in danger of being dropped. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. DIYers, it gets even uglier. Here's an article here on the Deadline website that says Universal Music Group, home of Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, starts layoffs. Here's an ex explanation of why the layoffs even happened to begin with. As expected, layoffs commence today at Universal Music Group, which includes Interscope, Republic, Capital, Def Jam, and Island, as well as Catalog Division, Universal Music Enterprises and UMG Corporate. The layoffs started after Wednesday's fourth quarter earnings call where CEO Lucien Grange talked of a strategic organizational redesign. That's Q corporate talk for downsizing. <laughs> Universal Music Group is planning what may become hundreds of job cuts to its recorded music division in its first quarter, which we're in right now. The company has more than 11,000 employees worldwide. If the layoffs occur, UMG would join a growing list of media and tech companies that have cut overhead. Warner Brothers, Discovery, Disney, NBC Universal, Google, and others have already trimmed 
A UMG spokesperson told Music Business Weekly, we continue to position UMG to accelerate its leadership in music's most promising growth areas and drive its transformation to capitalize on them. Translation. So before you get into his translation, um, I'm not going to lie, man. Y'all been being played for a long time. The music industry is rich and they're rich beyond belief. And you niggas is still broke. Y'all broke. They took everything from you niggas. Everything. All of those top execs are filthy rich. And most of y'all rappers who did all this music, they own y'all music. They making money off of everything y'all did and y'all broke. How does that make sense? They own all your material that you did. They made money off you. They hustled you. All you rappers, all you singers, all you musicians, y'all did all this for years. For years, y'all put in work. And these people did nothing. Y'all the ones with the talents. Y'all the one played the guitar, the drums. Y'all was the ones that rapped. Y'all was the one that made the beats. And they're filthy rich. And you niggas have nothing to show for it. Nothing. All those mansions and Lambos that y'all rented and leased and everything. Y'all have to sell it all. And still end up with nothing. Because you have to pay them all this money back. They put y'all in. It's so crazy how they did y'all. How they did you, you, music, you musicians. They gave y'all a loan. Said it was advanced money or whatever. Gave y'all some money. Tell y'all to make your album. You make your album, you make them billions and millions of dollars, and then you have to pay them back. But here's the crazy part. They pay you pennies to pay them back. You sell your album, they take a percentage of that, then they still need you to pay the money that you that they gave you back. So now you're in a hole. And guess what? You have to sell this. You have to sell that. You have to sell this. You have to sell that. And y'all taking multiple deals from all these different companies. And they're giving y'all the same contracts. Now y'all have nothing. Most of you musicians have nothing, man. And they own everything. They own all your masters. They own everything from you. You can't even use your own music. You have to ask for permission for your own stuff. Think about that. They've been playing y'all for years. These record execs, these record labels been playing y'all. And they give y'all a little bit of change just so you, you know, here. It's like on a string. It's like that guy with the, the dollar. Oh, you know what I'm saying? They give it to you. And then they take it right back. But they want 20, 20 more of those dollars back. And you only got five. Now you're in debt for the rest of your life. It's crazy. The money getting a little bit tight. It's very uncomfortable. We need to try to figure out how to flip some of these investments that we thought was going to turn a profit. And now we got to let niggas go. Over the past few years, we have been investing in future growth business, our e-commerce and direct to consumer operations. <laughs> Let me draw your attention over to this other clip. I love every once in a while tapping into folks who are within that industry just to kind of see, you know, what's the temperature, see if I can decode some of the things that are being said. Well, Esso of Esso's World, who is a well-known industry manager of a lot of folks, had a conversation with Ray Daniels, an exec, who we've seen content from his podcast on this channel before, and they're discussing these very layoffs and what it may mean for the music industry. The entire staff is getting let go, and that's across the board. Labels is merging, whole entire departments mm. is getting fired. They're swapping one department. Well, you keep that department, we're gonna fire that department. We're gonna keep this department, we're gonna fire that department. What the hell is going on, bro? I feel bad because there are great, great, great people that work yep. at these labels. Yeah. Great people Legends. who care, who don't. Man, listen. I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all, these people been playing y'all. They've been playing y'all for years. Playing y'all. Now, now y'all starting to see. How is it that, again, how is it that they are filthy rich and you're broke and they have all your stuff? 
They legally robbed you. That's what they did. They legally robbed you, put you in these contracts, took everything from you, and now you can't even make that. And then if you do go on tour, you have to still pay them because you owe them. They put y'all in such a bad position. And all of these record execs are never going to go broke. They're always going to, and their family going to be billionaires for the rest of their life. Their sons and daughters going to always be rich and y'all going to have nothing. Nothing. Why do we still do this? Why do y'all still make music for these people? If y'all really, really, really want to change something, stop making music for them. Start your own thing. If everybody was to be on one accord, then guess what? They would have to, they would have to bend the knee, but they've been doing it because they can do it. And then guess what? They're probably, that'll work for, that'll work, but they're still going to be rich because they own everybody else stuff. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And it's sad. It's sad. Well, let me play it a little more and let me get out of here care about content not no not the legends the legends are gonna be fine okay i'm talking about those people in the video department yep. the people in the radio department Prom the people in the pro marketing pro department who have a million who came in the music business with these bright eyes and great yep. ideas mm. and didn't have a chance to get it off the ground yep. and i want to say i first off i feel bad for those people yep. i want to tell those people the best thing that happened to you is what just happened to you mm. and here's why because your phone's gonna stop ringing wish a photo could hug you back ai has got you covered just upload two photos you want to see hug. Tell AI video to make them hug and watch them embrace each other and hold one another in their arms. Try AI video with your own ideas now. And you're going to realize how much of your time you've been putting up for sale for whatever your salary was. Mm. Everybody in the music business is not going to make it. Sometimes it's going to take you 10 years to get back to where you needed to be. That's it took a fact. Me 10 years, right? But the biggest thing that you got to, what you got to know. And that's, that's the problem right there. Y'all already accepted that that's it. Bro, stop trying to be in the music industry. Won't you tell people that? Won't you say, look, we all need to get out of this industry and we need to start our own. Why do y'all, why do y'all continue on with this? Everybody ain't going to be able to make it in the music industry. Why not? Because of what? Obviously it is a reason, right? So why would you encourage people to go there? Tell people not. Everybody should not be going to the music industry. Everybody should try to do their own thing, build your own thing. That's what you need to do and leverage them and make them pay you. That's what you need to do. Be smart about it. Was this, a lot of y'all is gonna get another shot. When you get another shot, understand what happened to you this first time. When you go back- You see what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like you niggas is begging for crumbs, man. Y'all begging for crumbs, why? Why are y'all begging for crumbs? Why do you need to ask this guy for money? There's, there's plenty of people who do all this stuff. If you're talented, you don't need to do none of that. And soon as y'all, as soon as y'all start to realize that, you don't. You don't need none of that. A lot of y'all want to go to Gap. A lot of y'all want to go to all these different uh, expensive stores, Nordstrom, anything, Macy's, anything. Y'all want to go there to shop. Because for some reason, y'all can't just go to Walmart and shop. Because if you go to Walmart and shop and you wear something out of Walmart, then people will laugh at you. The point I'm making to you is maybe you need to start somewhere smaller that you can afford and then build yourself up. But most of y'all, y'all want that clout. And clout don't pay the bills. It doesn't. And guys like this, I don't want to disrespect the man, but guys like this telling y'all, well, you're going to get that shot 10 years from now. 10 years? I don't want to wait no damn 10 years. I want my shot now, and I'm going to make it happen now. I think I'm going to wait 10 years for some, some uh, white Jewish dude up, up there to give me a shot about rap music. He don't even know how, my, how I feel in my culture. You crazy? But y'all okay with giving these people the culture. It's all right if we just lend it to them and they keep all of it. It's crazy.
into that label, make be able and understand you have to build relationships outside yes. and start building things for yourself or while you're at that label. Don't ever forget that because yeah. they because if they did it once, they'll So there's two things I want to say about this one cuz uh, you know they they speaking very candidly about there being people who are part of these layoffs that don't deserve to be laid off. There are people who do amazing work, who help these artists out, who are trying to make a difference in this crazy industry. And amongst those are some of the folks getting laid off who will be presented with other job opportunities. I'm sure that there are people who are more experienced, people who have a better reputation, but I feel like it's going to be a small percentage of all of these people who are getting laid off from not just Universal, but Sony Music and others that are going to be offered a similar job, especially like I said, with the emergence of AI, why would they ever spend anything for something that AI can do for them for nothing? I wonder how much of this is going to be people who are trading positions between different labels and how many of this is going to be people who came from that traditional system who are going to try to create new businesses that target independence. We'll talk about that in just a second though. Also this week in the news, as many of you know, Universal removed their catalog from TikTok, but in addition to removing the catalog, they're now starting to even, TikTok it is, is starting to remove people who might even just be a signed songwriter to UMG. Even if the song is not something that has ran through UMG, just because you have ties to UMG, TikTok is getting rid of it all because they don't even want the opportunity for it to be something that can hinder their future plans, I assume. It says TikTok is losing even more songs over its quarrel with UMG as the social media network is starting to remove songs published by UMG. The company confirmed to TechCrunch on Tuesday, the row between the two companies began last month that you, when UMG announced that it failed to reach a deal with TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, over royalties. As a result, TikTok had to remove songs owned or distributed by UMG by January 31st. Now. The company has to remove songs that contain compositions controlled by Universal Music Publishing Group. TikTok says all songs that have been written are co-written by a songwriter signed to Universal Music Publishing Group must be removed and all videos that feature these songs must be muted. The change means that if a songwriter is signed to UMPG contributed to even a small part of a song owned by another label, TikTok would have to remove it from its platform. Music producers, rappers. Now here's the thing, right? And um, I'm going to end it there and I'm going to let y'all go to his channel and watch the rest. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, man. So here's the thing. And I'm going to tell y'all what it is. And this is what I believe is happening here. AI has become really, really good now. Like, it's gotten to the point where you just, well, there, there, was, there was a commercial in there. I'm going to leave that commercial in here so y'all can see. You know what I'm saying? Go back a little bit. I'm not going to cut it out. Where they got a picture, they got an AI picture of people hugging. You just upload two pictures and the AI make your pictures hug. You upload two pictures and just say, make these pictures hug. And the AI will generate a hug. I make a video, a video of your still picture of you moving. A video of you moving from a still picture. A picture, not a video. It creates a video of you hugging. Now imagine somebody, imagine 10 years from now, they can be using that in court against somebody saying that this person was doing something with somebody. And the reason why these record labels are not dropping nothing because they figured out that when people was experimenting with these AI songs, you don't think that these record labels said, oh shit, this dude actually do sound exactly like him. This is amazing. All I have to do is say this and it'll generate a song the way I want it. And if I don't like it, you could do it exactly how I like it. And on top of that, the algorithm is telling me what's in, what's in style. I can make money off of the algorithm telling me, or I can ask chat, chat GBT. What is the algorithm saying and what what is 
What is it saying and what is in, in right now that people like? What is the sound that people like? Or what is the song? What is this? Or what is that? And then you put it in and you make it. You don't think these record like, bro, they had a whole case in, in, in Hollywood because they were saying that the Hollywood, um, the execs in Hollywood was trying to use AI to create these new movies. And I would be honest with y'all, they probably was better off doing that because Hollywood movies be trash now. But they were saying that and they were all on strike. They all went on strike because of it. They said that, oh, y'all trying to replace us with robots. You know what I'm saying? You think the music industry ain't going to take advantage of this? This is why you don't really hear too much from your artists no more. Because nine times out of ten, either they sign something with these art. We say, look, we could pretend that this is you. We're going to get the AI to do the music. All you got to do is be the cover. You ain't got to write nothing else. All you have to do is be the cover. That's it. And the AI is going to write these songs for you. And you just sing the songs. You just memorize the songs, sing the songs. You don't think that they, they, they had that in mind? You don't think that they're going to do something like that eventually? Or they might just be like, we don't need you no more. We'll create a whole new artist. Or since we own your music, we'll just use it against you. Not to use it against you, but we'll just, let's say Chris Brown. We don't need you, Chris Brown. You can go on with your life. We'll just, we'll just continue on for the rest of our lives creating new Chris Brown songs. Because AI can do it. That's what this all is about. The artificial intelligence have taken over the music industry and it's at the beginning of it. I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all right now it has taken over. It's at the beginning in 10 years from now, you probably ain't going to hear no artists no more. It's all going to be artificial intelligent music. That's it. Cause they ain't going to need them no more. And all those artists that gave you, gave them y'all likeness and y'all signed these contracts and all this stuff. They get to keep everything and y'all going to be broke for the rest of your life. That's all I'm saying. So just take that and run with it. Put it in your pipe, smoke it and all that good stuff. Either way, man, six o'clock show is over. Make sure y'all go see that eight o'clock show. Make sure y'all go see that 12 o'clock show. You know what it is, man. I'll see y'all in the morning. I'm out of here, man. Torture talk. Ha, 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 ha.